Pakistan's blasphemy laws just became even harsher. On January 17th, the National Assembly of Pakistan unanimously passed the Criminal Laws Amendment Bill to increase the punishment for the disrespect of sacred personalities, such as the family of the Prophet Muhammad, the companions and wives of Muhammad, and the four caliphs that succeeded him. Succeeded him. The bill was pioneered by uh, Maulana Abdul Ak uh, Akbar Chitrali of the Jamaat-e Islami Party. He stated, the punishment uh, for insulting a member of parliament is five years, while the punishment for insulting sacred personalities is three years. This is an insult in itself. The House passed the Criminal Laws Amendment Bill, stating that the disparaging of the companions of the Holy Prophet and other pious personalities disrupts the country, promotes terrorism, and hurts the sentiments of people all around the globe, as stated in the bill's objectives. The amendment bill increased the minimum punishment for disrespecting pious personalities from three to ten years of imprisonment, and can also result in a fine of one million Pakistani rupees. Rights, group war rights groups warn that this broadened and increased punishment will be misused to settle scores and persecute already vulnerable religious minorities. Wow. You know, for people who don't understand, the, the punishment on the Sahaba thing it's not just a. It's not just enforcing Islam. It's enforcing Sunni supremacy. So this is not. This is not Isla just Islamic supremacy. This is about uh, targeting other versions of Islam, especially other versions of Islam that that are not, you know, mainstream Orthodox Sunni. Yeah. And, and I think it's more about that than any other group. This is why this constant attempt to focus on. Uh, so, for example, like if you look at uh, in in Pakistan, it's it's not just about oh Muhammad, Muhammad. Okay, it's Muhammad, the last prophet. Okay, because you know we want to make sure that any groups of Muslims that don't consider Muhammad to be the last prophet to be you know to to feel the pressure. So the whole last prophethood is something very significant in Pakistan's politics. And now you see they want to make it even more specific by focusing on how important the sub. I think, so, um, so I, um, what was that second? It's Ahmed, Ahmedis, right? So the, the, the focusing on the uh, um, last prophet, Muhammad being the last prophet is to put pressure on Ahmadis in Pakistan and focusing on the Sahaba is, I think, to, is to pr put pressure on Shias in Pakistan, right? Because I don't know if you, you know Shias have a lot of views. So, and here's the problem. Um, the level of enforcement can be quite up to you, right? Because do you have to go and outright insult the Sahaba? And that includes the first three caliphs, Abu Bakr, Omar, and Osman. Or if you want to be very aggressive with your enforcement, you could basically say, if you're Shia, you're endorsing Shia beliefs. And Shia beliefs include a lot of insults to the Sahaba. Yeah. All right? So you are, by, you could... You could basically go to town with this. You could be like, by default, if you are a Shia, just like if you're an Ahmadi, by default, you are denying that Muhammad is the last prophet. Mm. You could go and say, by default, if you're a Shia, you're endorsing a doctrine that within it has insults to the Sahaba. So this could go very aggressively anti-Shia if you wanted it to. I think yeah. you're totally right. I think you're totally right. But yeah, but that's basically everything that I wanted. I wanted to say, um, if it's just absolutely absurd, like to have <sighs> the whole reasoning of this guy is that oh well, we already punish people for insulting members of parliament, which one is stupid. That shouldn't be a law. 
That shouldn't be a law at all. Okay. But because that punishment is larger than the punishment we have for the holy figures, instead of being like, maybe we should re-examine if we, if, if it, you should be punished for insulting a member of parliament, we're not going to re-examine that. We're going to say, we're now going to make this blasphemy law over three times worse than what it already was. And so they, they expanded the law and then they also made the punishment for it worse. And this is just going to be used at, to settle personal scores because we've seen this dozens of times before. And it's going to be used to persecute religious minorities. Um, we have a lot of comments that you highlighted. Um, oh, yeah. DMD is saying they have flood camps and power issues, but are worried about insulting ancient dead people. Good job, Pakistan. Sad face. Um, Asian, wait, Asian American saying, do the Shia still denounce the first three caliphs? I mean, you're not a, Sh it's, you have, to, that you're not Shia. That's a very, that's a very foundational definition of being a Shia, that the first, cal the first three caliphs were, you know, usurpers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It should have been Ali, y'all. Y'all. Um... Prometheus is saying, we knew that after Ahmadis is Shia's turn now. Next, they will go after Diobendi. Ooh, that's an interesting prediction. Let's remember that. Uh, Qasim is saying, it's a crime to call Muhammad just Muhammad in Pakistan. Oh, yeah, you have to. If you, you used to be, you, again, but this is what, what I'm suggesting about Shias. It's based on history, right? Because there used to be that you have to actually say Muhammad is not the last prophet uh, for you to get, you know, targeted. Now, if you do not come out and say that he is um, the last prophet, now you could get targeted. Ghazam, in Pakistan, you can't get your passport unless you sign an agreement that says that you recognize Muhammad as the last prophet. Not just a prophet, not just a prophet of Allah, but the last prophet of Allah. That's a, that is a requirement for your passport application you could be you a have citizen. to make it the state the state in a constitutional a constitutional amendment wants you to make this declaration for you to be able to get this passport yes you have to denounce and you also have to denounce that anybody who doesn't agree with this is not a muslim so it's a legal application to get your passport is to call out Ahmadis as not Muslims. You have to say like, I beg, I agree that Ahmadis are not Muslims. And that's how you get your passport. That's how insane the whole thing is. The, whole, the, the state, of, the nation of Pakistan is involved in takfirin. <laughs> yeah. As a state apparatus. Like, um, and I actually think that there was a blasphemy law that was passed. I'm not even kidding. Where it is now actually legally necessary for you to use an honorific when you're talking about Muhammad, like in your speech that declares that he's the final prophet. I'm like 90, 75% sure that that's the case. Yeah. So this is, by the way, this is Muslim on Muslim um, attacks, just for people to understand. Like this is different sects of Islam fighting each other. Prometheus is saying, Harris has shown videos of forced confessions where Shias were forced to praise the caliphs. So Shias who denounced the first three caliphs are forced by Sunnis to praise them, just to make sure that they're... Um, yeah, so this is going to be a requirement from, from Shias in Pakistan. Um, so this is from somebody in Pakistan who is watching us right now saying, I hate this stupid country. I feel like I live in hell every day. So just think, you know, for people to see, to see have a perspective about, we're talking about people's lives here. We're talking about a lot of, um, so this is, this might seem all funny and all and, and insane and ridiculous, but this people have to live this. This is a very big it's, country with a lot of people. It's laughable in the sense that it is absurd. Yeah. It's not funny in the sense of ha ha. Yeah. Um, Wait, but I want to highlight this really sweet interaction because then after Young Atheist said that, Numan, who lives in India, is saying, chill, you live in Pakistan. And then Numan, I mean, Young Atheist said, yes, Numan, but I'm currently in Atheist Republic with my people. It's like I hmm. met my with my online family. You all, 
you all are amazing. No. Oh. And they're like, oh, thanks. That's why we care about you. Thanks, bro, for supporting me. Oh. oh. See, this is Indian Pakistani unity here. Okay. Yes. This is what we're promoting. <laughs> yes, we 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 are we are we can be divided in religion, but we can be united in atheism. How about that? Right. We, we, with that religion, we, it's easier to bring people together. Um, I really do hope, like, with things change in Pakistan very soon. It's very sad. Um, anyways, yeah, let me unhighlight this one. I think I, you know what? With let me let me put a positive spin on this, okay? I think things globally things are changing so fast, and even things might even though things might seem hopeless i think in the very near future there's going to be a dramatic global change dramatic global change yeah like within yeah. the next 10 years yeah well at least fifth you know maybe 50 but but in the next 10 years we're going to see how fast things are heading our way but things well, are exactly. gonna get better yeah yeah okay you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says, get our free blasphemous art.